Welcome to Kendo Tips, my name is Jose and this is a compilation of some moments that happen in one of my streams. Sometimes cool and interesting topics come up, I just wanted to make sure to share some things that I find that I think are interesting and can be very useful. If you would like to join me in one of my live streams, just make sure you're subscribed with notifications on and you will get a notification when I go live. Most of the time Saturdays at 11.30, still working other times. For your convenience, the list of topics that I'm going to be sharing are down on a timestamp below. You can go there and find them quickly and go back to them anytime you want. If you have any questions, you can leave them down in the comments below or you can join the Kendo Tips Discord channel and join a community that is welcoming and wanting to learn and share from each other. And also you can message me directly there. In the meantime, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you do, please hit the like button and I'll catch you in the next one. Nice cashy doll. Okay, so this is one of the things that I always make sure that I keep in mind when practicing cashy doll is that you deflect forward and not towards you. Like you don't pull back towards you unless like, of course the point is like so fast that you're forced to pull back, but ideally you wanna receive away from your body so you have space to move the shinai around. And here it's, it's kind of like a little bit in between, right? So, but he managed to get a good, a good catch on the sword. And now this is also very important. I think Jan mentioned it to me uh, for my test. Uh, we're talking about this, that um, you want to avoid pushing your hands above after the contact has been made with the Shinai. You immediately want to come down on the dough. Like there's no need to keep going up after it's been contact with the sword. Oh, that nice, nice pop. I think this is so important about being able to, I call it pull the trigger at the right time, not tense up and not shoot out all your speed when you don't need to. Because here, uh, Red seems pretty relaxed, seems pretty chill until he, the moment that he throws the attack, right? Like, of course he has ener energy but all his intensity gets shut out in that moment. Ooh, nice, nice man, nice man. Now, this is one of those that Red clearly got it first, but it's one of those things that you kind of feel that he was going to get it even before he got the point, and it feels because of the pressure that he exerted. It's interesting, right? Because White was coming his way already, but he engaged for the men slightly before. Oh, nice Cote. Very sharp. And I mean, this this Degote right here is kind of dangerous because of how close he is to, to the man. But he managed to get, and he got him with full extension. And getting this angle in motion, it's a little bit hard. It's a little bit hard. It's a little bit risky. But he managed to get that angle right there before the man got contact with. And very nice, very nice and sharp. And notice one thing, like there's no pullback from the right arm. He is literally pushing forward. And this is one of the things that I always try to tell people when you're trying to create energy, you want to learn to create energy with your wrist and your fingers rather than with the momentum of the sword by bringing it back and forward again. You want to make sure that, you know, you don't waste time because you couldn't do that. You see, like he's barely pulling back but creating a good impact on the Cote so much that he manages to mess mess up also the the, the targeting or the, the hitting of the men from his opponent. So something to keep in mind, I think. Those are tricky too because if the judge if the chimpanzees are not good, they will miss that Cote as well.
You see, so the, the Shimpan are not being irrational uh, like or, or like, you know, unforgiving on pushing forward because if you saw Red right now was walking towards him to kind of make sure that he adjusts himself to have a proper way to pull back. He's not just, they're not just giving Han Soku because, you know, they're spending a little bit too long. So yeah, that's something to keep in mind. Very nice and explosive short steps. If you look at how he approaches, Red is approaching very tiny, very tiny, very tiny. White is kind of pulling back the distance, but at this point he's lifting up his stick, he's leaving the center. And then Red is just taking this moment right here. He's anchored with the left foot. Yes, he has extension on the hands, but he's very close. To his opponent and then at this point he's able to come around and not come around come above and hit him it's pretty nice 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 so this type of this type of motion this type of attacks i think is what you're looking for when you practice you see like this type of kota man he he got he could have gone like uh, stuck with the with the opponent Shinai there. He went for that Kote and immediately went for the man. This type of this type of attacks are most likely to get you e points. This type of attitude, I guess. You see that continuity of attack. Very, I I, I really like that. So this is what I was saying when it comes about the distance, about Jodan uh, covering a bigger gap and the timing being a little bit, a lot different than with Chudan, right? Um, when you are in um, Jodan, so normally we move with the back leg, we push with the back leg and then the right leg is, is sleeping or, or the forward leg is sleeping forward to do the Fumikomi. So in here, what makes it tricky is that he engages with the back leg to start pushing forward and instead of leaping forward to do Fumikomi here he's anchoring now this leg to start pushing and then leaping forward with what it was the right leg or the back leg sorry with what was the back leg and that creates a bigger leap number one but also because you're adding that momentum it just it throws off the timing, especially if you're not used to fighting against Jordan players. And this is, this is, you see, it comes out very fast, comes out very quick. Oh, very nice. And you see here, he switched the footwork, right? We'll see. So here he hit the Fumikomi with the right leg. So you'll see. So from here. Okay, hold on. So you see, like he, he landed, he did that thing that, that, that Nishimura did uh, when he won uh, the All Japan with the two men. <laughs> that he kind of made it look like he was going to step forward. Kind of as a semi, ah, oh, shoot, hold on. Okay, he kind of made, made it look like he's going to step forward. We'll see. But he, he took that time to create a momentum look here. He lands like he's going to take a step, but instead he keeps pushing with the left and throws off that man. Very nice. 